Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News Analyst Emmanuel Efeni. Good morning, Emmanuel. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning, Rufa. Good, Good morning, morning Victoria Tundu. MQ Abiola. Good morning, Mr. Yes. Efeni. Let's start the review with this day. Nigeria's newspaper of record. Constitution Review, National Assembly, OK's Autonomy for Local Governments, State Legislature, Judiciary. Senate passes 84 out of 68 constitutional bills, moves prisons, railways, power generation from exclusive to concurrent list, rejects pension for parliament presiding officer says states free to collect VAT, empowers national assemblies, state assemblies to summon presidents, governors. Turns down proposal for special seats for women in legislature. OK's independent candidature for election. Approves separation of AGF Justice Minister Office. Yes, other newspapers are also reporting the constitutional amendment going on in the National Assembly. The Punch newspaper, federal government loses out. Nash, National Assembly affirms states' powers to collect VAT. Lagos acquire bomb. Hey, lawmakers on value added tax. Say it is true federalism. Senators rep retain VAT on concurrent lists. Local government areas. Autonomy scales true. National Assembly, the, now the Daily Independent newspaper, National Assembly, okays administrative financial autonomy for local governments. Rejects pension for presiding officers of legislature. Declines power to override president's veto. Turns down proposal for special seats for women in legislature. Move to include VAT in exclusive list. Why the Daily Trust also reported this story. National Assembly top state local government joint account reject slots for women oppose opposes pension immunity for presiding officers. While of course the leadership newspaper also has a story as its lead. Constitutional review: President, governors may go to jail for rejecting legislative summons. National Assembly passes bill rejects special seats for women votes against moving VAT to exclusive lists. Well, the Constitutional Review, which started yesterday, the voting, of course, many of the yes votes are quite salutary. Is this restructuring taking place? Or can we just say, welcome to devolution of powers to the states? but perhaps not far reaching enough to make that kind of declaration. Because when you move responsibility, you also check the revenue, how it is shared, so that the states can deal with more responsibility. But it is quite a, um, a welcome development that areas of aviation, because states are building airports. They build airports and they want to turn it, they are asked to turn it over to the Civil Aviation Authority. But now states can build their airports run their airports, and take charge, as it were. But, of course, the most uh, disturbing aspect is the treatment given to the bills concerning women, and the women are not happy. And those of us who support women very well are also not happy. Ruben said he will join the women. We'll give you leave to go and join them in protesting. But from here, we'll give the women all the support. But it's quite uh, shameful. That whereas a man can marry a foreigner and the woman becomes a Nigerian citizen, but to a woman marries a foreigner, the case is different. What is good for the goose is good for the gander. It should be good. Should be good. I agree with you. Thank you. Now, what the National Assembly has done concerning women, although the reserving of seats for women in legislature, I didn't see how that will work. But there's need for more women's participation. Yes, appointed position, the president, the governors, must ensure that they appoint what they voted for is 20%. But I think 
35 percent the affirmative action should be for such um, appointed position. But how to get more women into the legislature? I don't see how reserving seats for them will solve the problem. There's a problem of implementation there, perhaps. That is what the legislature the legislature kept, um, hopped on to deny women more seats. Shouldn't we be putting pressure on the parties to give women, more women their tickets than just say we should reserve certain seats in the National Assembly for women? It's a matter of debate, but more participation of women is a yes any day. Tundu, Rufai, and Dr. Bati, maybe we want to talk about this. Well, you know, I feel very strongly about it. I think it's such a slap in the face. Um, APC, PDP have that in their party constitutions, which they've observed in the breach. They have little perfunctory gestures like giving women half price to buy a nomination form, and that's about that. So what the National Assembly is doing, which is you know, populated by members of those parties who have that attitude, is just showing the prevailing attitude towards women, the prevailing misogyny, the disgusting misogyny. I mean, this is 2022. I also don't agree with the idea of having more seats because for me, I don't even see why we have a bicameral legislature. I think unicameral is okay, especially with the kind of, with the quality of decisions that we saw yesterday. I think one of our houses should be scrapped and we should just have one. So I don't, we, we need a smaller, less bloated government generally. And because I'm trying to advocate for women does not mean that I will then say we should add even more people. But the issue is that How rather do we get than, more women into so the I'll legislation? tell you, rather than extending the table, we have to create a situation whereby these people are forced off their seats so their seats can be given to women. We need to know who voted against Nigerian women. They do not deserve to be called honorable. They do not deserve to be called senator. They're a complete disgrace and they have betrayed the people that elected them. We need to know and they need to be voted out, all of them, without exception, because we cannot continue like this. It is so wrong. And the issue of a woman not being able to give her husband citizenship that, in 2022. That, that is it's only countries, yes, it's countries like Iran that have that. It's and even in, Iran is better than Nigeria because Iran, their constitution does not allow dual nationality. So they can have that excuse. Our constitution allows dual nationality. What are you trying to tell us women that we're actually not full human beings? Is what we're, that's the communication that we're supposed to accept from these people. It is a disgrace. They should be named. They should be voted out, all of them. Well, we affirmative action has been part of, uh, you know, the substance of the UN's uh, convention uh, against the elimination of uh, discrimination against women, CEDAW, yeah. which was something that was negotiated uh, over the years. And there are many countries in the world where attempts have been made to ensure this affirmative action. Globally, France, US, you know, India as affirmative action even if the affirmative action in India is more about uh, race. Brazil, Sri Lanka, you know, these are some of the countries where affirmative action is a major issue. In Africa, you have the example of South Africa, you have the example of Zambia, Uganda, Rwanda, you know, although you have a, a president there, you know, who doesn't quite uh, support women. In Ghana, Nestle, there's also affirmative action. And this has been part of the conversation in Nigeria over the years. Under President uh, Obasanjo, President Obasanjo, out of his own goodwill, decided to appoint a lot of women into prominent positions, even if that was not state policy. Under President uh, Jonathan, you had women representing some of the commanding heights of the uh, uh, Nigerian uh, uh, policy-making process. Now, uh, the PDP at some point, I think, came up with a policy that women aspirants, female aspirants, would not have to pay forms, for forms, for nomination forms, as a way of encouraging women. But the whole idea of the activism is to ensure that this is codified in the law. First, the language of the Constitution is sexist. It discriminates against women. It doesn't even recognize the existence of women. Two, under citizenship or indigenship, under Chapter 2, the women are saying that if a woman has been married to a man for about five years, right? And uh, is, uh, she, she's uh, good enough in the other room. She should also be good enough to enjoy privileges as a citizen of her husband's state. 
That was struck out. Nobody agreed. And we've seen the kind of chaos that can cause in crossover state over the appointment of a chief judge. And they were saying, look, she's not from, uh, from this place. She's only a wife here in, 20, in the 21st century. Mm. Now, one of the issues is about allowing the spouses of Nigerian women to become citizens. The House also voted against it. Diaspora voting was also a, a knockdown. 35% representation for women in political parties, offices, and administration was also uh, rejected by the lawmakers. Okay? And I made this, the point here before, that women in Nigerian politics, they are restricted to the women wing. Yes, woman leader. And then you have a woman leader. In fact, in one political party had the audacity once to appoint a man, the woman leader of the party. And the man defended it and said, yes, I'm in charge. <laughs> okay? In cabinet uh, appointments, okay, they try to argue, no, not 35%, let's do 20% uh, for women. So this has been a very patronizing process. And I think gender representation in uh, political decision making in Nigeria will be in line with Section 42 of the Constitution, which says that nobody should be discriminated against on the basis of gender, faith, or circumstances of birth. Mm. And many of these men, you know, who uh, go to uh, these positions, they are not half as good as women. Of yeah. course, they're not. about uh, 50% of the uh, population. So what you are dealing with here is marriage chauvinism. What you are dealing with is uh, patriarchy. What you are dealing with is uh, misogyny. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we've seen it played out big scale. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier on, we had Georgina reporting from uh, the National Assembly, the protest by the women. Well, the lawmakers, they are majorly men. Mm -hmm. They are or outnumbered the men. They've, uh, the women, they've taken their decision. The next stage is that those resolutions will go to the state uh, Houses of Assembly, where you need two thirds endorsement. In fact, the the chauvinists, the main chauvinists in the uh, state houses of Assembly, you can be sure, are worse than the ones in Abuja. I can imagine. Okay, so this is the problem that we face. Mm. The whole objective is how do we harness the full potential of Nigeria to mm. ensure that uh, smart women are also part of it. These are the smart women who produce the children. Mm. They must be relevant beyond the other room. Because they've shown capacity beyond the other room. Well, Even anyway, why? What, what is the meaning of that? Uh, yeah, 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 your face. Yeah, so I mean, you keep banging on about the other room. It, I think that's it, why. It, if, <laughs> if I can make a quick comment, that's I, not why. Please. If well, for quick, me, that's why. If I can make a quick comment, I had a chance meeting with the MP representing Nottingham, less than thirty years of age, a woman. I ask, when will that be the lot in Nigeria? And those are questions we should ask. And please, we should all come on board as regards this and fight this. We are building a very unequal society. The country is in turmoil. There's injustice everywhere. We need to respect the right of the woman. I am appalled by the lawmakers that made this decision. And in fact, their names should be published. They should be shamed. They should not get those seats again. But apart from this, also, we should bring resource together as regards ensuring that women have a good financial pot they can take from to run elections. Because that's another thing that undermines their potential. No money is always the case. Some groups are already doing that, but I think we should improve on that. And I think women out there that are out there on the protest grounds are the real heroes. They should stay there until they get something done, and they should press every button possible with those lawmakers. We cannot have a country where injustice reigns supreme. It is not good. We cannot have a country where women make the larger bulk of the voting population. And when it's the time to do what is needed for them, nothing happens. If some women didn't lead the suffragettes movement, probably women wouldn't get a chance to vote today. We must see this as another suffragette moment and fight till the very end. And every man out there, please support. I don't think the women should give up yet. This protest that started should be ramped up. Yes, okay. around Take the Take a look at Finland. Finland is led by a woman, Sana Marin, right? Yeah. Young. Yes. Yeah, they yes. are Right? Yeah. And even in the cabinet, the top persons, they are all women. Yeah. They seem to be making a good job of it. 
Yes. So one of oh. these days, we'd like to see people like uh, uh, Mr. Ifeni, you know, as you call him, retire and allow women. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Dr. Bashi, if I can quickly sum up for Finland. The key political parties in Finland deliberately made a decision that their leaders become women. And all of them are less than 40 years. I mean, there are pictures yes, of them hanging out in the club. So the key political parties made that decision that all their leaders... So automatically, if this woman that is leading Finland leaves, you are very sure that the next person that will come in be another woman. Well, the women too must be right. Yeah, no, that's look, important. No, uh, important. Ruben, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no doubt about the capacity, capability no, of the Nigerian woman. Yeah, so we need a call. it's not a matter of being ready. No, giving no, them this space and allow them to, to, to also be part involved. of the process yeah. is what we are talking about here. And this protest, Aisha Buhari was at the National Assembly. The wife of the vice president was at the National Assembly. I think they should also continue to press the button. If and we can, if we can revisit the electoral act, then why can't we revisit some of these? Exactly. First this is a in Dubai, having a birthday. Uh, she's otherwise. Yeah, please let's take okay. a <laughs> the foreign story. Yes, let's look at the foreign stories quickly. But just before we go to the foreign stories, the first situation is still very bad. And the mm. Guardian newspaper is reporting Buhari leaves for Nairobi, London, as where scarcity bites harder mm. in Nigeria. That's the Guardian. Nigeria's the Guardian newspaper. Yes. Now, the foreign newspapers quickly, the Times of London, leave now, Putin wants as he prepares to bombard Kiev. Russians seek to encircle city with 15,000 troops. Hundreds of thousands flee across borders. Now, the Daily Telegraph, Zelensky pleads with West to prevent genocide. What was the point of saying never again, asked President Zelensky, after Russian missiles strike near Ukraine Holocaust Memorial. Now, the Wall Street Journal is reporting Russia hammers civilian targets. Life under bombardment hits Ukrainians Hard. Now, the Financial Times, China offers role as peacemaker. Yes, China has signal that it's ready to mediate between Ukraine and Russia. Of course, there was that conversation between uh, the Russian foreign minister, uh, minister uh, no, the Chinese foreign minister and the Ukrainian uh, foreign minister. So we hope they will start a peace process so that we can have ceasefire. Bombardment, no, no. Well, thank you very much, Emmanuel. Thank you.